ऑनरेबल स्पीकर ऑफ टुडेज प्रोग्राम श्री कैलास सत्यार्थी जी माय कोलीग्स फ्रॉम विश्वेश्वरैया टेक्नोलॉजिकल यूनिवर्सिटी प्रोफेसर आनंद एस देश पांडे दि रजिस्ट्रार प्रोफेसर बी ई रंगस्वामी दि रजिस्ट्रार एवल्युएशन ऑल माय रीजनल डायरेक्टर्स डॉक्टर पी संध्या दि स्पेशल ऑफिसर ऑन ई लर्निंग फ्रॉम मैसूर सेंटर ऑल अदर स्पेशल ऑफिसर्स माय कोलीग्स एंड फैकल्टी मेंबर्स फ्रॉम ईटीयू the principals deans teachers from various engineering colleges and all my dear student friends and invitees ladies and gentlemen it is an honor to have shri kailash ji uh, to deliver uh, in the webinar series uh, which is being conducted by this university continuously this is the third in the series at the outset on behalf of Vishweshwarya Technological University and its family on on my personal behalf and all the attendees present here, I all heartedly thank Satyarthi ji to spare his valuable time to accept our invitation to be a part of this university and also agree to speak on universal human values and the social responsibilities of the present youth. Sir is working on totally transformation. not only in terms of youth but in terms of education system and also that is the only you know weapon to realize the growth of any country or to have any social justice and also empower our youth that is the only way we all look forward and with you sir is also working towards uh, being a professional engineering college you know being an engineer from our own family Uh, that how uh, important is to have uh, an impact on engineering uh, students especially in terms of their responsibilities in terms of their work culture in terms of professional ethics they need to have in building the nation definitely uh, each and every student would contribute to the growth of the country but engineers uh, do contribute more than uh, the other professionals so i think sir in that Uh, regard uh, professor ranga swami was uh, you know working with your team to have you uh, uh, to deliver a talk on universal human values uh, we have uh, in fact included two credit two courses uh, in our uh, curriculum on universal human values uh, being taught by professionals and also uh, one course of uh, two credit on uh, professional uh, or sorry personal health and wellness of our uh, student So with this, sir, this university is a very young university, just 22 years old, and uh, we have large number of students, uh, engineering uh, uh, graduates uh, being, you know, um, honored with degrees in more than 35 undergraduate program, nearly 63 uh, postgraduate programs, with PhD programs in all the engineering disciplines and also uh, in terms of applied sciences. uh sir we are really blessed to have you on this uh, occasion today uh, we are very much eager to hear you uh, on uh, the uh, values and the professional ethics and the universal human values and also youth empowerment uh, uh, as per your foundation you have started working on uh, child friendly world uh, we all strongly believe sir uh, with uh, in, a, in an education system like ours if the students come with smile and go with smile i think we have achieved our target so with this viewers i once again personally thank you for accepting our invitation sir and now over to you and we are very much happy and blessed to have you on this occasion thank you very much sir the nobel peace prize for 2014 is to be awarded to Kailash Satyarthi for the struggle against suppression of young people and children there is no greater violence than to deny the dreams of our children i refuse to accept that the laws and constitutions are unable to protect our children today is the time for every child to have the right to life i refuse that the shackles of every can ever be more stronger than the quest for freedom i refuse to accept here you know the 
Getting a greeting like this is all the reward Kailash Setyarti needs for freeing these children from a life of slavery. He tries to give these kids the childhood they missed. Do you think these kids see you as a Nobel Peace Prize winner? Oh, I don't think they, they see me as friend or brother or something like father. I have looked into their frightened and exhausted eyes. I've held their injured bodies and I've felt their broken spirits. I refuse to accept that children belonging to certain sections of society are born to work for others at the cost of their childhood and freedom and education. If the children are exploited, if the children are deprived from their childhood in any part of the world, the world cannot live in peace. The world cannot be human. It's not often the two winners of the Nobel Peace Prize get together, but it happened yesterday when President Obama met Kailash Sartiarte. They were joined by three children who were rescued from child trafficking and forced marriage. You cannot live in isolation. All the problems and solutions are interconnected. And so the problem of child labor in any part of the world is your problem. Setyarti organizes raids with local police, but sometimes employers are tipped off and waiting for him armed. But I have been attacked many times in my life. You had a gun to your head? Literally, yeah. This is dangerous work for you, Somebody has to pay the cost for freedom. It does not come on plate. So if I, if not me, then who else will do? Who will another prize? Who won the Nobel Prize, he asks. In reply, all of us kids. <laughs>
that is in itself is a great value. Remembering the lives and works and dedication and sacrifices of all of our martyrs and the great people. And when we express a sense of gratitude to them, when we pay tribute to them in this year and every year and every day, we can learn a lot from them. The second reason of this appropriate timing is that the world is struggling with unknown fear due to corona pandemic. Not only in India, globally, we are all frightened with one to next to next mutation of COVID-19. And that gives us a lot of challenges, but a lot of opportunities to learn. In this challenging time, I said that this is not only a health crisis. This is not only an economic crisis. This is the crisis of civilization. Because civilization is built on collective thinking, collective behavior, collective actions, collective decisions. And in today's world, these collective thinking, decisions, actions, priorities are changing. So it is affecting the entire civilization. And therefore, we have to dig out some of the core values which are universal. We have to learn the very fundamental and basic thing from this catastrophe, this situation. And that is that world is interconnected. The world is interdependent. No problem could be solved. Even no problem could be seen and analyzed in isolation. That interconnectedness is something which is driving us and we have to learn this lesson from it. We are walking on the same earth. We are living under the same sky. We are getting energy from the same sun. Is it not enough to inculcate this value of oneness in the society. Today, dear friends, I would be dwelling upon three major values, universal values. As we know that these values are desirable virtues that support and encourage the full potential and the full expression of our humanity. And that's why they become the universal values. We are very lucky, most of us, to be born in India, which is the mother of universal values, universal thinking, universal uh, sisterhood, brotherhood. We are born in a country where thousands of years ago, our rishis, our munis has given us a very simple and clear solution to the problems, but also our own identity as one family. They say, I am Nijaya Paroveti Ganana Laguche Tusham Udara Charitanam Tu Vashidhaiva Kutumbakam. This is mine and that yours. This is the notion, this is the feeling of those who have a mean mind mentality. Those who are liberal in their hearts, for them, the entire world, the entire universe is one family. That sense of oneness, that sense of one familyhood comes from Indian soil. And that's why we also believe the Vedas say that 
भूमि माता पुत्रोहम माता पृथ्वी पुत्रोहम एंटायर अर्थ द प्लेनेट इज लाइक अवर मदर एंड वी आर द चिल्ड्रन ऑफ दैट मदर लैंड एंड नाउ वी आर ऑल स्ट्रगलिंग विथ climate change global warming trying to find the solutions through many ways alternate energy sustainable energy and so on a thousands of years ago the rishis said that this this is our mother the earth is our mother and our relationship with the planet has to be like that unfortunately the materialistic paradigms the materialistic way of life uh over the years gradually changed that mindset not only in india globally so today i am talking about three things as i said the first one is compassion many of you will surprise to learn that compassion is a source of all the religions and interestingly it is also the seed or the source of all the revolution in the world let me clarify it what is the compassion what is the value of compassion and what could be the application of compassion the first thing we understand when we express uh some kind of sympathy that that is not bad sympathy is the outermost circle of our relations with others when you can feel the suffering of others and express your solidarity your uh, your feeling that is sympathy then the inner circle is empathy empathy is a, a feeling when you feel the suffering of others as your own suffering and that makes you sad sometimes you happy sometimes uh but that is the next inner circle but the nucleus lie in compassion compassion is much more deeper than this compassion is the feeling for the suffering of others as your on suffering with a drive with a desire to take action to alleviate that suffering to end that suffering so compassion has both element one is your connectivity with others at a deeper level to feel the suffering and difficulties of others as your own but also gives you a drive a courage to take action to end it as it is your own suffering i would share two examples one was the very first day of my own schooling i was born in a modest family we were not poor but we were not rich either my father uh, was a policeman in madhya pradesh police he passed away when i was uh, 16 17 year old and my mother had to work hard and my uh, brothers uh, supported me for my education and higher education and so on but the very first day i went to a local municipal uh, school in the school and i encountered something a boy my age 5 6 year old boy was sitting outside the school gate he was a cobbler and he was looking at me and other newcomers perhaps we are going to give him some job of shoe shining or shoe repair but we were all having new shoes but i looked at his eyes and he was looking at it at us with eagerness but also with the desire perhaps so we can give some money some job and i kept these eyes with me in the classroom and i asked my teacher sir the first question first interaction in my school life began with that i asked my teacher sir why a child is sitting outside because i was thinking that every child was supposed to go to school 
and why is working my teachers said come down this is your new day make new friends and so on. i said okay sir i returned back and i saw the boy still sitting in the open sun there is no umbrella there is nothing i asked this same question to my mother my brothers my other family family members and all of them tried to convince me that this is not uncommon this is a very common thing that poor children have to help the families they have to work and so on i was not convinced second day third day fourth day every day i used to see that cobbler boy and every day i was sad i was angry i didn't know what to do what what to know more about it but one thing was very clear that i understood at this young age 5 6 year old age that whatever my teachers say whatever my parents say whatever the wise people in my family and friendship say may not be justified may not be the truth if there is a rule if there is a a a, a tradition or there is a common practice that every child is supposed to go to school after some time after age of 5 6 and so why this rule or this practice is not applied to the child that cobbler boy so i started with questioning myself questioning the whole world these eyes of the boy gave me a different perspective of life when i was walking on the streets in my small town vidisha in madhya pradesh i found many more children were working on the streets and the same question came to my mind again and again and again one day when i was coming back i gathered all my courage and went straight to the boy who was sitting along with his father and i asked why don't you go to school the boy was shy but his father answered he said the folded hand the caste system was so deep rooted my family was a brahmin family and this uh, boy of course belonging to the caste which is which is a an excluded suppressed untouchable caste those days considered as untouchable he stood up and said babu ji school jane ke liye to aap log hain हम तो इसी काम के लिए पैदा हुए हैं। कॉन्वर्सेशन I started crying, and I cried. But that cry was perhaps the seed of my own compassion. I felt the suffering of that boy in me, and I started thinking that how can I solve this problem? That was the beginning. But dear friends, it was not easy. Of course, my parents wanted to make me an engineer because I was securing, scoring good marks in mathematics and science. says and so on so i got some scholarship in the beginning but of course if i have to study further then a lot of cost was involved in it but i followed my heart i taught in the university for about a year and a half but eventually i gave up my career because i realized that if i am an engineer i can use these skills i can use that education and learning in a different way and i can build and construct and solve many social problems but primarily the issues of children who are most excluded and most miserable so i gave up my career and started this but that was not enough child labor slavery trafficking were known issues those days 
it was not easy to convince anyone that this is wrong, this should not happen. There were no study. Many of you will uh, be surprised to learn that there was no international program. There was no scheme in India or in most parts of the world. There was no news coverage, there was no discussion, no talk, absolutely not in the parliament or any of the uh, state assemblies. Uh, but that was about, uh, say, 50, 60 years ago, 50 years ago. So I started a magazine that was dedicated for the most marginalized children and women. One day, a framed, thin, older, elderly, elderly looking person knocked on my door. His name was Vasal Khan. He was a desperate father whose daughter was about to be sold to a brothel. His 15-year-old daughter of Vasal Khan Sabo was born and grew up at a brick kiln because the parents were held in bondage in slavery even before the birth of that girl. And I was talking to him. I realized that if she was my sister or my daughter, I was 25, 26 year old. I thought that if she was my sister, what would I do? I'm not going to simply write the things on paper and then get some, some action from the authorities. I started assuming that she is my sister. I decided to go with Basil Khan with some friends to rescue her. He was thrown away, we were beaten up, Basil Khan was caught. But I never gave up. And that is something I learned while I was struggling, without computers, without mobile phones, even without calculator during my engineering days, solve the problem. We are not going to give up here as an engineer. So I met some of my friends and were advised to go to the court. With the help of them, we filed the habeas corpus petition and within a few weeks, we were able to free Sabo and 30 uh, three other, uh, 35 other children, women and men. This was the first clear, big, concrete application of my compassion. But I realized that child labor is not an isolated problem. It has so many manifestations and not just in India, but also in Pakistan, in Bangladesh, in Sri Lanka. When I started working in Pakistan back in uh, mid 80s, the Pakistanis um, alleged that this guy uh, is a raw agent and he should not be allowed to enter in this country. But for me, the Pakistani children were my children. I, I, as Indian children were my, were my children. If I say that Vasudhaya Bukutum Bukam, if I say that the entire earth is my mother, how, how could I differentiate the children of different countries? So I started working in many more countries. And that has resulted in global march against child labor. I've learned that we have globalized so many things over the years. Globalized economies, markets, globalized production, supply chains, globalized technology, globalized knowledge, and so on. And now this, uh, this new wave or new era of artificial intelligence is so fast in globalizing information and knowledge and technology and so many other things. But I have a serious concern that if we keep on losing the humanity, the core values as a human being, a sense of responsibility towards each other, then we will lose everything one day. We cannot become a machine. We cannot turn into a machine. Though I am an electric engineer, I believe in automation. I believe in all those kind of things. And I am even curious to learn more about the new inventions in technology, even today. But I know that artificial intelligence cannot and should not replace the human compassion, the human feelings, the relationship with a sense of 
moral responsibility towards each other should not shrink. And this is the time. And India is the place, India is the land to work for globalization of compassion. The West has taught us so many things to globalize, but we should teach to the whole world that we are the one. We Indians will globalize compassion and make this world a better place, make this world a peaceful and sustainable place by way of globalizing compassion. This is our virtue. This is our value. That is something which has, which is there in the DNA. application of the core values has been the great tradition in India. The rishis, the gurus, the rishis were not simply teachers. I always say that when India was so-called Soneki Chiliya, the golden world, India was also Jagat Guru. And Jagat Guru was not Jagat teacher. Jagat Guru was, the knowledge was practiced in one's life. Only then one can be the Guru. And that was the case. So, when Jesus Christ realized that the people are suffering, He said, let the children come to me. Do not hinder them from the kingdom of God that belongs to them. He was so associated with the sufferings of children. And pay the way, set a principle that let the children come to me first. It is in the Bible. Similarly, Quran Sharif, the Muhammad Sahib, felt the suffering of other people. And in case of children, he said that do not let the children die due to hunger. So many children are dying of hunger today in the world. So many children are facing malnutrition today in the world. But his compassion also began with children. Same thing with the great people in India that I need not to say or uh, repeat. So friends, let us globalize compassion to make this world a peaceful and sustainable place. That connectivity is much more needed than ever before in this situation. I would also dwell upon the second value, universal value, and that is a sense of gratitude. Sense of gratitude. Yesterday, yesterday or day before yesterday, I was um, uh, giving uh, uh, a uh, uh, convocation address uh, in Bangladesh University, though it was virtual, and. Uh, I, I said one thing to them, that you are going to get this degree today, of course, in this Vishwarya College, Technological University, you guys are going to, my daughters and sons, young people are going to get the degree soon. But every day, if we feel some sort of gratefulness to all those right from our childhood to now, who made it possible. No one can say, no richest person on earth can say, no the most powerful politician on earth can say that he is born as one individual with tremendous um, power um, and he has been able to reach to that, uh, that, uh, that height uh, without the sacrifice of others. This is not possible. So many people are involved. Today I am uh, sitting in uh, Balash on this uh, education and rehabilitation center of uh, children who are freed from child slavery, child labor. And uh, I am sitting in front of this screen. Um, I am sitting in this uh, room in my small office. So it was not possible uh, without uh, the contribution of so many people. Electrician, plumber, uh, mason, the people who uh, were working in brick kilns or stone quarries, I am sitting in this room because of them. 
I am sitting in this room because of so many engineers, so many people who have been able to develop computer and the screens and, and this, this technology. So I'm grateful to them. I'm wearing this cloth. I have taken my breakfast this morning. So I am grateful not only to, to my cook, but also all those farmers, all those farm workers, all those people, uh, the vendors and so many other uh, people who are responsible to uh, to give me that food on my table. But today we are slowly losing this great value of gratefulness, gratitude. Gratitude joins us. But gratitude also gives us more kindness, it makes us more enthusiastic. There are so many interesting uh, scientific studies and sociological studies. Sociological, uh, sociological studies prove that those who are grateful to others, those who are having the feeling of thankfulness, they are better human beings, they are better businessmen, they are better professors, they are better doctors, better teachers and so on. So the combination of compassion and gratitude makes you a better human being, but also better leader, better businessman and so on. There is a scientific biological study about gratefulness that gratefulness helps in, uh, in increasing neuroplasticity and that sets brain cells in a better way. So the grateful people are much more clearer in their perceptions, in their decisions than the people who believe that they are the one who are responsible for their success and they are the one who should be credited, only they should be credited for their success. Similarly, there's another study which uh, has been done in, in I think, uh, um, somewhere in America, I forgot, that it the, 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 the feeling of gratefulness and feeling of compassion helps in increasing of adorphin uh, inside uh, us and that gives enthusiasm, that gives energy, that gives us uh, a sense to take initiatives and so on. So that is the second thing, to be grateful in this situation. If we are alive today, if we are active today, if we flourishing today, if we accomplish something today, it is because of so many other people. Very simple things, but it will help a lot. So I'm not going to talk about uh, the big thing of liberty and peace. These are the values which are interconnected, but I'm focusing on something which is very practical. And the third thing is inclusion. That is also highly connected with these two. Our Rishi said, Sangat Shadhum, Samvadadhum, Samvo Manansi Janatam, Deva Bhagam, Gatha Purve, Sanjananam, Upasate. Simple meaning that let us walk together. We pray and we take a resolve that let us walk hand in hand, let us walk together so that no one is left behind, no one is left out. It's a great political message also that we have to create an environment in a society, the environment of level playing field, the environment of giving equal opportunity to everyone, giving an environment where people can speak together. It, it says, the mantra says, Rigved mantra, Samvadadvam, we have to create an environment where we can speak freely, fearlessly. That means we have to, to, to respect the viewpoints, the opinions, the diversities. We have to respect the differences of opinions, but also differences in religions and worships and cultures and, and traditions and so on. And that is another thing, that how we are going to learn inclusivity. So some other dhvam, 
the freedom of speech, freedom of expression, but it does not mean that the freedom of expression make you exclude it. Freedom of expression uh, is misused in such a way that people are pushed back uh, because of your freedom. That must not happen. So, Sankachadum and Samvadadum have to go hand in hand. And Sambo Manansi Janatam, let us sit together, let us come together and create a knowledge. Sambo Manansi Janatam, let us create a knowledge which is the knowledge for all. So this exclusivity in keeping information and knowledge and data, this data monopoly, the data apartheid, I would say, the data um, uh, basis, all these things are discarded in this mantra itself that let us create a knowledge which is knowledge for all. So, democratization of knowledge, democratization of technology, democratization of artificial intelligence is the core message comes out of this and that will make the society inclusive society. And if the society is not inclusive, then we cannot think of justice. The value of justice, universal justice is not possible without creating a culture of inclusiveness among ourselves, creating a character individual person has to inculcate that that character so that is another thing um, i would say the third thing and then i'm sure that young people could be the biggest drivers of all these values and much more dear friends before concluding I would say the youth are change. Youth are today. You are today. You are tomorrow. You need not to look for heroes and other people outside. There is a hero inside each one of you. I, under, I underline that each one of you is a hero. Each one of you is a change. Each one of you is a champion for the betterment of the world. Dig out that hero inside you. You need not to be the followers of the world. You have to be the leaders. You have to be the hero. Those who are shown on the silver screen, we call them hero, heroines. And we are very happy and glad that. But many times when I meet them here or Bollywood or even in Hollywood, they admit that we are just the actors. The heroes are the one who live those values. If Somebody is coming on the silver screen and touching the feet of an elderly woman, so-called mother, who is acting as mother. As somebody is helping a poor person, somebody, some young person is helping a young lady and eventually wanted to fall in love and eventually married. So these are all act, uh, these are all act, uh, uh, acts. So they say that we are actors. But if I ask you young friends, students that when you touch the feet of your mother when you help someone that somebody is directing you is there any director sitting in the back and saying that you have to do it like that you have to to bow down this way we will give you some money some some charges big charges for that no you do it on your own you love your children you love your wife you love your friends but you love because that is natural. This is not act, uh, uh, act. So you are not acting. You are living with many of such values. And that's why I say that you are here. You can be inspired by anyone. Definitely. You should learn from everything. Everyone. You can learn from, from the players. You can learn from the politicians. Learn from the film stars. But the hero is you. Those who think that young people are the problems, I always say they are wrong. Young people are the solution. And when the youthfulness and engineering come together, then you are going to write the new script of New India. I am sure that many of you or most of you are going to be, make this nation more proud. We have all the potentials. Indians have all the potentials to lead the world 
in all in all sectors in all fields and no one is better than you and more potential than you my dear young friends the future is in your hands the history is looking at you the future is looking at you you have to break open the doors and enter into it and bring the peace bring the sustainability bring the betterment and joy in the lives of everyone everyone and do his or her own his or her own way when i was receiving i was invited to give my uh, acceptance speech on the dais of nobel prize uh, i lost my papers um, uh, my speak notes uh, and everybody was very nervous because it's a intellectual property and the people do research and there's so many uh, you know doctorates and post doctorates are done um, on uh, on the speeches of the nobel uh, peace laureates and other nobel laureates so uh, but i was more comfortable as i am today talking to you as i said that so i uh, remember a, a story which i read in my childhood there was a heavy fire broken out in jungle all animals everyone was rushing for a safer place including king lion lion noticed that there was a tiny humming bird flowing flying towards the flames towards the fire and he was surprised he asked shouted what are you doing committing suicide she answered no sir i am going to extinguish this fire i was born and grew up in this jungle i cannot leave it like that so he was more surprised and asked how come how could you do it she replied sir look at my beak i am carrying a drop of water i am doing my bit she knew i am doing my bit she said my dear friends at this university students teachers faculties professors everyone even somebody who is providing you some food or drinking water or sweepers in this campus everyone the clerks and and, uh, and the gardeners and everyone you are that bird you are that tiny humming bird you are all carrying drops of water and those who are knowledgeable those who are in power they are carrying not only the drops but the entire ocean god cannot be so meager that he has not given you the ocean of compassion why you keep your compassion confined to your own siblings and your own brothers or mothers or sister or whatever sin sons and daughters and grandchildren god has given you the ocean of compassion use it i am not a preacher no i am not a leader as i said as a, as a brother i can tell you that i am here not to give you any updesh any preaching i am here to awaken that tiny humming bird which is inside each one of you 160 million children in the world 160 million children in the world are working at the cost of their childhood and education whose children are they those who are producing wealth at the cost of their freedom whose sisters and brothers are they those who are working in the factories and giving you these clothes who are they those who are working in slavery in brick kilns and stone quarries who are they those children who are making sporting goods your footballs your cricket bats who are they they are all your brothers and sisters they are all your children ignite the power of compassion power of compassion feel that you carry something in your being and you are not going to leave the world without extinguishing this fire of violence and intolerance and exploitation and injustices around you we have to make our motherland 
great proud thank you so much